Welcome to Coffee with Joe for Friday, March 5th, 2010. Salud. Uh, we want our listeners to know that this is going to be the first in a series of posts uh, that's about defending the criticisms that we anticipate getting for the monetary reforms that we advocate at economicstability.org and that you've been hearing about if you've been watching these videos very long. Reforms that are expressed in the American Monetary Act that we provide a link for. Joe, um, the libertarians and Austrians uh, share a lot of common ground with us monetary reformers. They see the dysfunction of the current monetary system, the current debt-based monetary system. Um, so the way I look at it is they share the same diagnosis of the problem. Uh, with the monetary system that we have. Now, they, uh, generally speaking, do not advocate the reforms that we advocate, and in fact, they are rather strongly critical of them, in particular in a recent post over at the Von Mises blog. The Von Mises Institute is a, I guess I would say, a, a libertarian Austrian-leaning think tank in Alabama, I believe, they recently posted an article called The Dangers of Monetary Reform by a Finnish uh, gentleman named Kaj Grusner. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. Well, first of all, I want to say uh, thanks to Kaj and to the commenters for providing a generally a considered critique of our ideas about monetary reform, Joe. Um, <laughs> When the uh, reforms are entered into legislation by Dennis Kucinich, at some point we hope in the near future, there is going to be widespread criticism of them, and we monetary reformers need to be ready to answer the questions that come up about them. And so sure. what, what von Mises has done for us is it's given us a little heads up on what these criticisms might be. These are intelligent sure. people who have been thinking about these things a lot already. So we appreciate Mr. Grusner, and we appreciate the opportunity to engage in a respectful discussion about reforms of the monetary system. Just as a little background, Joe, I would say that our goal in reforming the monetary system is to create a, a new monetary system that creates the greatest good for the greatest number of people. It's pretty simple. We don't think that the monetary system as it exists now creates the greatest good for the greatest number of people. We feel like it rewards privilege quite a bit. Joe, would you say that's a safe thing? I would say that that's a, that's a very safe thing. You know, um, you know, my, my dad and and uh, you know Major Clifford U. Douglas, the great social creditor. You know, they they both talked uh, very broadly about economic democracy that the democratization of the economy requires that we reform the monetary system. And so, yeah, that's, this, that's, that's saying, you know, the greater good for the, for the greater people. And so, um, in terms of people that we like to engage in this discussion who may not agree with us about um, how the reforms might be going forward, uh, we would like to welcome anybody else who has that goal of creating a monetary system that creates the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Uh, people who don't do not have that goal for monetary reform, we probably don't have a whole lot to say to at this point. Right. Uh, but we would like to move forward with that common goal and discuss how it might best be achieved. As you read Mr. Grusner's article, uh, there's a lot of stuff in it. And in fact, Mr. Grusner is responding to an interview with American Monetary Institute Director Steven Zarlenga that we will also provide the link to that's posted at the Gnostic Media website. There are a series of now three, I think they're all over an hour, interviews with Mr. Steven Zarlenga of the American Monetary Institute posted there. And Mr. Grusner's article is a response and critique of what he heard in those interviews. Some of it I characterize as um, he's correcting Mr. Steven Zarlenga's uh, statements that he makes in those interviews about what libertarians believe about the monetary system, I don't really want to address all that stuff in this. I want to try to get down to what are the criticisms of our monetary pr reform proposals that come out of this article. And I've got them boiled down to four 
uh, main criticisms, I would say, that we will cover in a series of, we're not going to get it all done today, Joe. Uh -huh. um, we'll get okay. done what we can, and I'm already halfway through this video. But <laughs> I just want to, I just want to set the table for the conversation yeah. here. Yeah. Um, the first, and uh, constitutionality. Um, what does the Constitution say about the monetary system? And is it constitutional for uh, the U.S. government, the U.S. Treasury, to issue their own currency, issue their own paper money? We'll look at that. The second one, the second and the third are related. The most common criticism you're going to hear about a U.S. Treasury issue debt-free money system is that that would be inflationary. And in fact, we even did a copy with Joe on that several months ago. We're going to revisit that territory. See, that's the second legitimate point of, of discussion. The third legitimate point of discussion is that the transition from the fractional reserve banking system to a full reserve banking system would be inflationary. And Kaj in his article goes through some numbers uh, where he draws the conclusion that the transition proposed by the AMI would be inflationary. That's the third. And then the fourth one is a statement that's at the bottom of the rather lengthy comment section. In fact, you can go back several weeks on the Von Mises blog. There's no post that has as many comments on it as this does. So it's generated quite a conversation already. A fellow named Richard says, perhaps the most bizarre aspect of their theory, being monetary reformist theory, is that because all new money under the present is created as interest-bearing debt, the cost of that interest causes inflation rather than the fact that the money supply is increasing. So again, even the fourth topic that I'm identifying that I would like to address is related to two and three, which is that these reforms would be inflationary. We're not going to have time to get to that today, Joe. Maybe we can start a little bit on the constitutional question. Uh, there's what been a lot of mischaracterization of what, what the Constitution says, okay? Um, but the Constitution, you know, clearly gives only to the government the right to create money, okay? You know, to a large degree, the framers, you know, the guys who sat around at the Constitutional Convention, left it. Com not completely resolved, okay? Yeah, they gave Congress the power to create the money, but how, in what form, how's it, how's it going to work out? They left that to, for, the, for the future, you know? My take on it, short, quick answer, is that, you know, the ultimate Supreme Court decisions have been that, the, that the Congress has the right to pass legal tender statutes. Joe, we're all already almost out of time on this video. I would like to give our listeners a little uh, more thorough look at the constitutional aspects. So let's come back on the next video. Let's look at actual language in the Constitution, talk for a few minutes about those court cases, okay? Sure, we'll okay. do that. And Sounds then we'll good. take on the inflation issues after that, over the okay. next week or two.